Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are doing a low tech mission to Elu. This is probably the cheapest, easiest way you can get to Elu. Well, maybe not the easiest because you do have to do a lot of gravity assists, but certainly the cheapest and simplest way to do it without having to unlock a whole heap of technology. Just starting off here by selecting some upgrades from the Research and Development Center. Now this is just a level one Research and Development Center, no need to upgrade this at all. And anything under a level four tier here, uh, I consider to be low tech because you don't need the upgrade. So select all these ones. The main things here that we need are the fuel systems and the heavy rocketry. So we, uh, we need to grab both of those. So heavy rocketry here we want simply because we get the poodle engine and the skipper engine. It's pretty hard to do this mission without those. We don't need anything at all here from this fifth tier, which is why we don't need to unlock it. But what we do need are these fuel systems. We basically want the larger fuel tanks. We don't really need anything else, just the larger fuel tanks. We then want to grab the general construction tier just so that we've got the large decoupler. We kind of need that thing if we're going to use the large fuel tanks. And optionally, you don't need to, but you can grab the basic science tier, which will just give you that science junior unit. That's quite handy if you're heading out to a new place for the first time. So we'll grab that as well. So we have spent around 315 science points to get all this unlocked. So you'd probably just need to do a few missions uh, before you can unlock all this stuff. So now that we've unlocked those research and development parts, we also need to uh, do a few building upgrades because there is no way that I can think of to get to Elu with 18 tons. So the first thing we need to do is upgrade our launch pad to support a much larger vessel of around 140 tons. So we'll upgrade that. We also need mission controls upgrades so that we can actually plan our flights. It's damn hard to do this without flight planning. And we need our tracking station upgrade to give us the patch conics for um, the same reason. Now, upgrading the astronaut complex is optional, but if you don't do it, then your Kerbals can't do an EVA or plant a flag. So that's kind of sucky. So we're going to grab the astronaut complex upgrade as well. So a total there of just over 500,000 in funds to unlock all that. You don't need it all, of course, but uh, yes, that's, a, that's probably a recommended set of upgrades. We'll head to our vehicle assembly building here. And would you believe that this is the vessel that's going to get us all the way to land on Elu and back? It's a fairly simple vessel. We've got the Mark I command pod on top there with a few science instruments around it. The heat shield, it's got the Terrier engine there under its stage. And underneath this, we have our very first larger stage there with the Poodle engine. The Poodle engine is very important because it generates electric charge. This is our only way to recharge our little battery inside the Mark I command pod. So that's really important. We have our uh, booster stage here. This has got the three skipper engines and just enough Delta V to get us Almost to orbit, very, very close. Now, because this is a brand new game, there is no Burberry Kerman. We are taking Jebediah today. He's already taken a bit of a jaunt around the moon and Minmus. So that is about all there is to this craft, but check out what it can do. Let's launch this thing. The thrust to weight ratio of this thing is around 1.45, so it can take off quite quickly. The entire mass of the vehicle is 136 tons, which is just a few tons obviously short of the capabilities of our level 1 launch pad. Also, the entire rocket is just shy of 46,000 in funds, so uh, it's not a huge amount of money to spend on a vessel with this capability. Now, Elu is a dwarf planet, which is pretty cool. It's about the same size as the moon, just a tiny little bit larger, uh, around 3.5% larger. And it has no atmosphere either, so you do need to make a fully powered landing. And uh, yes, from the Kerbal Space Program wiki, we can see that this moon is largely modelled, it seems, off Europa. Passing 700 metres per second there now as we burst out of the atmosphere. And as our apoapsis climbs above 70 kilometres, we'll cut those engines and just coast until we get a little closer there. That makes our ascent just a little more efficient. This isn't going to get us entirely uh, all the way to orbit, but very, very close. This is a wonderful day for Jebediah, of course, because it's the first time uh, in this playthrough anyway that he is actually leaving Kerbin's sphere of influence. As we reach the apoapsis there, we'll burst the last bit of fuel out of these engines. This is going to get us to around 2,000 meters per second and then fall harmlessly back down into the atmosphere and burn up, leaving us just with this next poodle stage here. And this is going to get us the vast majority of the way to Elu. Just a tiny little burn here from the poodle engine just to raise our periapsis so that we fall into a nice circularized orbit, or near circularized anyway. 
And what we need to do is now transfer to Eve. Now, this is the wrong direction, many of you might say, but what we're going to do is use Eve as a point to gravity assist and slingshot us out into a higher orbit. This seems a bit counterintuitive, but gravity assists are really the only way to do this mission with low-tech parts. So as we time warp around to our manoeuvre node, we can appreciate the small little planet Kerbin before we leave it for a very, very long time because ELU is a huge mission. So for this gravity assist, we need just shy of 1100 meters per second of delta V. Now this is a good portion of the entire tank of fuel we have with this Poodle engine stage. So as Kerbin falls away from us, becoming a tiny pale blue dot, we can appreciate, again, the beauty of this little planet. So this is a good time to explain the electric charge situation we have set up here. When we don't use any sort of probe core or anything that requires a constant small amount of power, we basically use no electric charge at all unless we engage the stability assist and turn our vessel, which you can see here. Now as we do certain maneuvers with our Poodle engine, that will keep recharging our small battery in the Mark I command pod. So yes, basically you can take as long as you want to do your mission, you don't need any solar panel here. Uh, all you need is the ability to not overuse your stability assist, which uh, can be a little difficult if you're doing a lot of gravity assist. So I did have to keep this quite conservative. So after you leave Kerbin's sphere of influence and you sort of get out into a solar orbit, uh, you can then of course fine tune your trajectory just so that you're going to hit your, uh, your EVE mark uh, basically spot on. What we're doing here is just adjusting just very so slightly. It's only a, really a few meters per second, uh, but it's going to make all the difference. We want to actually adjust this trajectory so that it throws us out into a higher orbit around the sun there. Now this gravity assist from EVE is simply going to allow us to come and encounter Kerbin again at a higher angle. So even though it's not giving us a huge boost, what we're actually trying to do with it is re-encounter Kerbin uh, within our next orbit. So setting this up here now. So there we go there. We have spent around 40 meters per second there uh, with that mid-course correction. So we can now time warp around to encounter Eve. Jebediah, of course, is extremely excited being the very first Kerbal in all Kerbal history to pass a body outside of Kerbin's sphere of influence. Now just prior to doing our gravity assist at EVE here, we can just do another extremely fine correction here to actually set up our trajectory here so that we re-encounter Kerbin uh, in the next orbit around. And we can actually fine tune this to the point where we can actually get it impacting almost with Kerbin from here. Obviously though we don't want to impact with Kerbin, but we're going to fine tune this again later on. So a few more meters per second spent here just doing this fine correction. And of course, the reason why we do these fine corrections as we get closer and closer to your target body is just because it is very, very hard to be that accurate from such a large distance away. So this gravity assist took us quite a while to sort out, but we are now obviously passing very close by Eve for a beautiful view there. Only a brief view, however, because we are now orbiting the sun again to encounter Kerbin to do our second gravity assist. You can actually see here that because we're cutting over Kerbin's orbit so drastically that the gravity assist here is much more effective. So just this 12 meter per second correction here now just to fine tune our, uh, our ejection there from Kerbin out towards Joule. Now it doesn't quite get us far enough and I just couldn't get the gravity assist to throw me out any further than this. So yes, I don't know if you can get much further from, from this style of gravity assist that I'm doing, but uh, yes, this gets us quite a distance to Joule. Now we do have the Delta V needed to actually make the rest of the burn here to Joule. So this is fine. Um, it's probably more than possible to make another gravity assist at EVE to get us the entire way to Joule. But we want to complete this mission within a century. So let's just get started with this burn. This burn of 475 meters per second will get us an encounter with Joule here. Now that we have our trajectory here set up to encounter Joule, we can basically get to ELU very, very cheaply from here with just a few small corrections now. So again, just setting up those fine corrections there to get that gravity assist set up and then we are on our way. Now setting up an ELU encounter like this can actually be quite time consuming and tricky. I was really lucky actually in this uh, 
this particular mission because the planets were aligned well. And that has got nothing to do with astrology or any of that malarkey. Nothing to do with horoscopes, tarot cards or psychic readings. I was just lucky enough to have the planets in the correct placement in their orbits for me. So we have our encounter there fairly close. We will now do our dual flyby. And we'll also wave goodbye to Tylo, who also gave us a bit of a push in the right direction. So the main issue we have with encountering Ilu is it's generally on quite a different inclination to the rest of the planets. So uh, yes, we were again quite lucky here, uh, making a few more finer adjustments now to get that encounter set up as close as possible. We have here around a 50 meter per second burn just to make this adjustment. And again, this is a very small amount of Delta V from our large Poodle engine tank there. Although we are running now very low on fuel, but we should still have enough to actually come down to almost land on Elu from here. The idea is that we have the entire next stage to get all the way back to Kerbin. So uh, this Poodle engine stage needs to basically get us most of the way down to land. So because we were able to get a gravity assist that would put us in a very similar orbit here to Elu, it's only going to take us around 590 meters per second to actually drop down into an Elu orbit. So there we go there, now all we need to do is simply deorbit this thing and come down for a nice gentle landing hopefully. So uh, I'm not sure whether we've got enough fuel to make it all the way down. Uh, let's see how we go. We'll just start by wiping off most of that horizontal velocity. And because we can't easily stand up on this poodle engine, we're going to ditch this stage now that it's almost empty and let it fall gracefully to the surface. We'll just use as much Delta V as we can, just getting this as close to touchdown as possible. So we'll ditch that stage, fire that Terrier engine and hopefully touch down gently here enough to be able to keep standing because if we can't stand this thing we're screwed. And touchdown, yes, for the first time on Elu. There we go there with the very simplest craft possible. Although I shouldn't talk too soon because we still need to get back, don't we? So yes, let's get out of this vessel. Really, that stage didn't end up too badly there. We lost that poodle engine, but there's still a little bit of fuel sloshing around in that one there. <laughs> we'll just plant a flag here. And we'll also run over here and do an EVA report before we hop back up onto our vessel ready for takeoff. Although we actually do of course need to then do our science readings on our uh, science instruments there. So we'll just EVA up and board back into our Mark 1 command pod and we can now grab our science reports. We'll grab the goo unit, we'll grab the temperature scan, the, uh, the pressure scan as well and of course our science junior unit can grab us some more science. Now we want to collect the data from that science junior unit because it's not going to return intact. That's going to burn up in Kerbin's atmosphere if we make it back in one piece. Now Jeb has already been on this mission for nine years, but so that we can get an efficient encounter back uh, to intersect with Kerbin, we need to re-encounter with Jewel. That means a very, very long wait on the surface for Jeb. He's living here for many a year. So after an excruciating wait of 22 years, we can now take off from Elu with the full knowledge that we have a great transfer window here with Jewel. We better hope that the Kerbal Space Center sent plenty of entertainment up with Jeb in his Mark 1 command pod. Perhaps he had the equivalent of Netflix stored in that thing or maybe the equivalent of YouTube, who knows? Let's just hope that poor Jeb has not gone completely insane from the isolation of living in a single little command pod uh, with only himself for company. So a quick ejection burn from Elu there at 251 meters per second. And we've almost used half of the fuel in our tank at this point. But this doesn't matter a great deal because we are again going to use Jewel to gravity assist and slingshot us down towards Kerbin. We just need to make this encounter first. As we set up that maneuver node, you'll notice there that we've got another burn here of around 120 meters a second. That was about as efficient as I could do this. For some reason, I just couldn't get my trajectory quite right. So this probably could have been a little more efficient here, but no matter, we have plenty of Delta V here to get us back after we slingshot out from Jewel. As we pass our periapsis at Jewel, we're just going to make another small burn here just to tweak this orbit so that we can get a very, very nice encounter here with Kerbin. So this combination of gravity assist with a slight burn at periapsis gets us exactly where we need to be. 
So just to make our encounter with Kerbin nice and simple, we are going to equalize that inclination difference there. We are half a degree away from being uh, perfectly aligned there. So we're just doing a correction here to fix that. Remember, of course, it is always most efficient to do inclination changes at the lowest velocity possible. So we are much better to be doing it at the descending node here rather than at the opposite side with the ascending node, simply because the ascending node in this case is much closer to the sun, meaning we'd be moving faster at that point. Sadly, we were not able to encounter Kerbin on this first orbit. So the maneuver node set up there is actually one orbit ahead. So we've got yet another big amount of wait time there. Just completing our final orbit here before we encounter Kerbin. And of course, poor Jeb here, now 46 years older than when he left, uh, probably needs to come back book himself into a retirement village and forever wait for his useless grandchildren to come and visit him. <laughs> Let's just hope that he has a very large fanfare awaiting him on his return. Now as we come in to re-enter here, you'll notice in the bottom right there that we have around 1000 meters per second delta V left in this tank, so we actually made it back here very easily using that gravity assist. We could have almost done a direct transfer straight from Elu to Kerbin uh, with the amount of delta V we had, but instead we've obviously just ditched that into the atmosphere. We're going to do two passes through the atmosphere. The first pass just to knock off a lot of our velocity. We came in at 4,500 meters per second, which is pretty high. We can't come in much hotter than that without burning up, even with a heat shield on. So uh, yes, we, uh, we came in fairly carefully. And coming in now to do our final error break, uh, and obviously coming down for a landing. So there we go. As you can see, it's very possible to get all the way to Elu, land and return with some very basic parts and with not a huge amount of investment into the research and development center and of course your building upgrade. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do take a second and give it a thumbs up. All of your support helps a massive amount. Obviously any questions for me, whack them down in the comments below. Thanks very much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe. Your support is just amazing. Literally past 20,000 subscribers uh, today. So thank you very much for all your support. You are all just amazing. If you would also like to follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, you will get to see little snippets of what I'm working on through the week and sometimes before the post. So yes, uh, thank you very much again. And we will see you in the next video because this whole thing is coming off. Lift off here now. We are going to be accelerating straight up. We do not want to stay in the atmosphere one second longer than necessary. This atmosphere is absolutely brutal. We've already dropped that first set of tanks. The second tanks are going to expire after we reach around 400 meters.